Welcome back to Sunday Night in America. Will President Biden run for re-election? Are Democrats quietly preparing for Plan B? Meanwhile, another Republican candidate launched his presidential campaign, Vivek Ramaswamy, a successful businessman and author. Former Vice President Mike Pence is giving it what he calls prayerful consideration, while Senator Tim Scott gave his vision for America's future in Iowa this week. Joining us now is former Biden campaign surrogate Kevin Walling and Fox News contributor Charlie Hurt. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. I'm going to do what I always try to do, which Good is evening. give equal time to both. All right, Kevin, I'm going to start with you to flash my bipartisan skills. What are the chances <laughs> the president opts not to run? And do you really think he's giving it some thought? I do. I, I honestly do, uh, Trey. Thanks for having me. I think this president is a pretty deliberative guy. He's going to talk it over with uh, Dr. Biden, uh, with his family. But all indications are uh, that he's running for re-election. I saw him just last month. I think he's fired up uh, for this campaign. I think you're seeing a White House that is now emphasizing all the arduous things that he's doing, just the length of the train ride into Kiev, for example, on President's Day, a 10-hour trip, round trip, describing in detail that this president is up for it. They released his most recent uh, White House physical exam uh, the week before. So, again, they are preparing uh, this campaign and waiting for him to announce, likely uh, in April, by most indications. Charlie Hurd, it's great to see you again. I guess we now have a you. couple of folks on the GOP side, three announced candidates. Who do you think is next, and when is too late to jump in? What, what should be their, their timetable, their schedule? Well, I think that uh, I think without a doubt we're going to start seeing a lot more people get in. And as you you, know, you men mentioned, uh, Mike Pence and and uh, someone like Tim Scott, I think is a great addition to the to the field. Um, and I think we'll probably see a lot more. Mike Pompeo, for example, comes to mind. Um, but I think that. And, and by the way, I think it's going to be a really good, wonderful, terrific. Uh, battle of ideas. Um, I think that uh, it's amazing to sit back and realize how far sort of the Republican Party has been reshaped over the last couple of years, I think, to a much stronger, more responsive uh, party to, to, the, to the base of its voters. Um, so I think it's going to be a really interesting fight. I think that uh, we're going to wind up seeing uh, most of it get settled over tone and how to, uh, how to go about doing a lot of the things that, um, mainly because most people sort of agree on everything. On the Democrat side, if I can jump into that, I do think it's also interesting. Uh, I do think that, that Joe Biden is uh, definitely uh, going to run again. I think that despite the fact all of the failures that and the thing, the baggage that he's going to have to defend, it's going to be very difficult for him. But he enjoys the same advantage right now as he did two years ago, where you do have sort of a splintered Democrat party in a lot of ways. It was unified a little bit. Because, uh, because everybody didn't like Donald Trump, but, you know, in the Democrat Party. But uh, the party is very, you know, there are a lot of divisions there. And a guy like Joe Biden sort of bridged all those gaps and, and sort of avoided the civil war within the Democrat Party. But at some point, they're going to have to deal with those things. All right, Kevin, I want to play a clip for, from a Republican candidate, Nikki Haley, and ask you a question on the other side. There's no shortage of issues, but what I will tell you is Americans want more. They want something different, and they want it now. And we can't do enough to make sure that Joe Biden's last days are ahead of him. All right, Kevin, I like Governor Haley. She, I, we're from the same state. I consider her to be a friend. But on, the, but on the competency issue that she laid out there, if you have to pass a competency test to run over the age of 75, would you also have to pass a competency test to vote on who gets to serve if you're over the age of 75? I just, I, I didn't understand that as kind of a lead punch for running for president. So, I mean, if you're not competent to serve over a certain age, are you competent to vote on who gets to serve? 
Yeah, Trey, it's a really good question. I think uh, the former governor was using that, obviously, to make this generational argument. And she came out, uh, you know, punching pretty uh, well in her Charleston announcement just two, two weeks ago that I think surprised a lot of people on the ground. It was a big crowd. A lot of my friends were there. I split, split my time between South Carolina, your home state, uh, and here in D.C. And I think she's using this competency, competency test as a way to make that argument because Donald Trump will be 79 should he be elected uh, in his first year back in office. And obviously, Joe Biden will be 81. Uh, and she said it's time for a new generation of leadership. We'll see if that is an effective strategy to take on both men without actually naming Donald Trump, her main opponent right now and her former boss. Charlie, we've only got about 30 seconds, but I'm going to ask you a question. Is there any chance in the world we'll have actual real debates? I'm asking a good guy from Virginia, or is it just going to be kind of 45-second nicknames and sound bites? I mean, any chance in the world we get, like, real debates? Oh, I, no, I think that when you look at the ideas that Republicans are wrestling with right now, they're really wonderful ideas, foundational ideas. And yeah, I, so I do think that that uh, lends itself to marvelous, genuine debates. And I'm really looking forward to it. And, I, you know, I know a lot of people are sort of worried about, uh, about the strife within the Republican Party. I'm not. I think it will. I think the Republican Party will come out stronger for the serious debates that, that we're about to see happen. Thank you, gentlemen. You, your civility toward one another. I thank you Charlie's, so much Charlie's for Charlie's a buddy. This is always a Sunday great night. conversation. <laughs> thank you. Loved having you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.